Z-Image Turbo has been out for a few weeks now, and it's absolutely everywhere. Exaggerated headlines, flashy demo videos flooding your feed non-stop. But I know what you're really thinking. If you're a beginner, after downloading and opening it, you're probably completely confused. Which parameters should I adjust? Why is the screen full of red error boxes? And is this thing really that magical? The truth is, over the past few days, Z Image Turbo's ecosystem inside Comfy UI has finally matured. Pose control is now stable, in-painting is available, and the workflow actually makes sense. That's exactly why I didn't rush to make a video earlier. I deliberately waited a few weeks. Because I don't want to be just another news repeater. Over the last three weeks, I personally tested hundreds of images, hit every pitfall imaginable, and finally distilled everything into this. The most beginner-friendly, step-by-step Z Image Turbo Guide for 2025. Today, there's no complex code and no jargon you can't understand. I'll walk you through everything, from installation to the few critical settings that 90% of people overlook, especially the ones that cause those annoying errors. Whether you're a complete beginner or a designer looking to boost efficiency, after this video, you'll be able to skip the learning curve and start producing high-quality results immediately. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Vision. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All the resources used in this video, including models and workflows, are bundled and available on my Patreon. You can download everything for free by following the page. Thank you for your support. First, we need to build the foundation. Installing Comfy UI. You can simply search for Comfy UI on Google, click into the official website, scroll down to the download section, and choose the version that matches your system. Once the download is complete, extract the files, double click the installer, and select an appropriate installation path. There's one small but important detail to note if your PC has a dedicated GPU, make sure to enable the GPU acceleration option during installation. If not, the CPU version will still work, but the speed, you already know, it's still perfectly usable. Then just follow the on-screen instructions to finish the installation. When you open Comfy UI, the interface may look empty, don't worry. Simply drag in the custom workflow JSON file that I've already prepared and tested. At this point, you'll probably see a bunch of scary red boxes saying, missing nodes. The solution is very simple, click this area in the top left corner, select Manage Extensions, then click Missing. The system will automatically list all the nodes you're missing. Install them and restart, and you're good to go. Next comes the core step downloading the model weights and placing them in the correct folders. Pay close attention to the paths on screen. Quinn 34 b this is the brain. Place it in the Text Encoders folder. VAE. Place it in the VAE folder. Z Image Turbo GGUF. This is the core model. Place it in the UNet folder. Z Image Turbo Fun ControlNet Union 2.1. This is the ControlNet model. Place it in the Model Patches folder. Tip: Why do I recommend the GGUF 8B version? From experience, 8B offers near lossless quality while dramatically reducing VRAM usage and improving speed. If you have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, this is currently the optimal choice. Now that everything is set up, let's use it. For basic text to image, we'll start with a simple prompt, a girl walking on the street. Click generate. Not bad, but not mind blowing either. To turn not bad into cinematic, here's an advanced trick I highly recommend. Use a small local AI model, quenvl 4 b to enhance your prompts. Connect the Olama node in the workflow and paste in the system prompt I provide available on Patreon. Think of it as hiring a professional cinematographer for your prompt. Look at this. Same seed, same intent, but after Olama's refinement, the lighting, composition, and details are dramatically improved. Notice, Z Image Turbo is extremely sensitive to double quotation marks. If you use them in your prompt, the model may interpret them as literal text and produce strange, 
garbled characters in the image. If you want to emphasize a word, use single quotes or parentheses instead. Once the basic generation is done, here comes the main event. How do we precisely control a character's pose, depth, or edges? That's where the control net models specifically designed for Z Image Turbo come in. Although the official workflow templates are available, I made two key optimizations to ensure everything runs smoothly for everyone. VRAM optimization. Here, I replaced the original loader with a UNet loader and paired it with a GGUF model. This immediately cuts VRAM usage by half. Pose extraction. We use the DW pose node. On the first run, it automatically downloads the required weights, which is very convenient. You can choose whether to extract facial expressions, finger details, or full body motion based on your needs. Click run. And you can see that the character's movement matches our reference image perfectly. The accuracy is extremely high. Besides pose control, we can also control depth. I recommend the depth anything V2 node here. Again, the model downloads automatically. No need to manually access overseas sites. A small tip. If you want to test a single control effect in isolation, select the other nodes and press Ctrl plus B to bypass them. As you can see, the generated image strictly follows the spatial structure of the depth map. If you want to control the outlines of buildings or landscapes instead, you can switch to edge maps. The logic is exactly the same. Here's a bit of insider talk. Why did the official team rush out version 2.1 just days after releasing 1? I went through the technical documentation and ran my own tests, and I found a fatal flaw in 1. It has very poor consistency during the intermediate sampling stages. Look at this comparison. The intermediate images from 1 are chaotic and unstable, while 2 is much smoother. This directly determines the final success rate of usable outputs. So trust me. Just pick version 2 or 2.1 without overthinking it. Finally, let's talk about ControlNet 2.1 parameter settings. This part is critical. Officially, they recommend. If strength is 0.65, set steps to 9. If strength is 1, increase steps all the way to 40. However, based on my testing in ComfyUI, my conclusion is, 20 steps are more than enough. This is because ComfyUI's underlying sampling implementation is slightly different from the official version. Setting the steps too high not only wastes time, but also makes the image prone to overexposure or muddy colors. Keeping it at 20 steps gives the best balance between image quality and speed. InPainting is one of the most important recent updates. Changing clothes, fixing faces, this is how you do it. Here's an exclusive tip. I added a differential diffusion node to the workflow. In simple terms, it gives the model pixel level awareness. With it, the inpainted area blends seamlessly with the original image, with far richer texture detail. You have to try this. So what's the real selling point of Z Image Turbo? Speed and low VRAM. Here are real benchmarks. On my RTX 4070 Ti, generating a standard image takes 10 seconds. Generating a 4K image? About 2 minutes. For comparison, the latest Flux 2 model crashes immediately when attempting 4K. Even for standard HD images, it takes nearly 4 minutes. 10 seconds versus 4 minutes, this is a workflow level efficiency gap. Of course, native 4K generation doesn't always deliver perfect detail. That's why I prepared an upscaling workflow. Use the 4x RealWeb Photo model. It's ideal for realistic styles. Set tile size to 512 to save VRAM. The result? You'll get poor level detail. Let's be real. There are a few limits you should know about. Style range is kinda limited. It nails realistic stuff. But anime or artsy styles? Not so much. Editing isn't super flexible yet. It won't do neat text tricks like turn this cat into a dog as easily as picks two picks. Don't try to make 4K right off the bat. The framing can mess up. Do your edits at normal res, then upscale to 4K. To sum it up, 
If you want ultra-realistic portraits without upgrading to a 4090, Z Image Turbo is the best model to start 2025 with. That's it for this step-by-step -step beginner guide. If you found this helpful, please hit like it really helps the channel. All workflows and model lists are available on Patreon, so go download and try them out. I'm Smart Vision, helping you overtake the curve with AI. See you in the next video.